Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to, uh, I don't even know what you want to call this, Artist Spotlight. We're going to look at some Simon Bisley. I mentioned yesterday that we would. So we're going to look at this um, Dread by Bisley. And we're going to look at Slain number one. I was going to try to find a couple of other things, but my books are oversized. I didn't see them. I'm looking right now at my bookshelf if I spot it. I don't think they're in here right now. I definitely have more Bisley. I know I have the full Slain run. But anyway, we're going to look at the Dread Bisley first. I haven't seen this in a while. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully everyone's doing well. Woof, woof, woof. I can't start a video without dogs barking or planes or helicopters or a cat fight. It's just impossible. So I was curious and I wanted to ask, because there's probably some people that know, um, like, what what sort of inspired Bisley? I'd be kind of curious because I I know that there was one artist that worked at 2000 AD or possibly Fleetway that was kind of um, uh, a predecessor to the Bisley style. So if you know who that is, let me know because I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, Simon's really really talented. He he really could draw his ass off. Um. It's just crazy, like, how, like, I mean, he could paint well, he could pen and ink well, he really could draw well, he could cartoon well. He really had, like, the full scope of, like, awesome skills. It's, you know, he's really, really legit. He just had such a pedal-to-metal style that I think, um, you know, he was kind of like a thrash band, but with, like, super high musicianship. <laughs> Which ended up happening, but yeah, it's like, I mean, he clearly knows anatomy really, really well. I mean, he understands lighting and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. And then he's got like a, I don't give a shit attitude to it. That makes it super cool. All those legs are great. book is a hard one to turn pages i can already tell <laughs> like dang it these tight bindings on the book it's nice it's terrible for videos oh, that's cool <clears throat> reminds, reminds me a little bit of howard shaken but i think it's more just because of like it's so cool oh man look at that that's so awesome Boy, that is so good. This is nice too. <laughs> yeah, man. He can draw so well. Paint so good. <laughs> Same with, hey, it's Lemmy. <laughs> Bisley was kind of like comics, Lemmy. In a way. Especially in his prime. I don't think he's softened with age, though, to, to be clear, but, but, uh, man, it's so awesome. He's actually a really good letterer, too. Like, he'll do sound effects and stuff like that in his art sometimes, and they're, they're actually very, very well done. Man, that is so crazy. And so I'm going to track down some Texaria... We were talking about him in the Jay Lee video in the comment section, and uh, I want to try to find my Ghost Rider issues that he did, and then also uh, the Wolverine stuff that he did, because I'm nearly sure I have that in black and white in the um, Essential Wolverines. It's nuts. Really nice drawing. Oh man, this is cool. So short stories. I remember this page. Funny. You know, it's been a million years. It's really, really nicely done. Man. That's cool. Zoom.
that's really cool. It's not much to say, honestly, when someone's this good. That's a great upshot. And he didn't have to draw the nose, but man, the chin and like neck, whoo, that's nice. He's really good with the fabric too. Like that tight, like, well, I don't even know what you call it, like leather or whatever. Man, it looks so good. Even though I have a big collection, I kind of feel like I'm probably missing something really, really good from Simon that just slipped through the cracks, like some short stories or something. I've always kind of felt like that, that like, because whenever I find a certain era of my work, it's so damn good. And it, it's just, I had this weird hunch that there's more out there that I haven't seen. So if you know any of those like sort of more obscure stories that are really good, let me know. It would be cool. I'll, I'll seek them out and then... uh I can do a video on them, check them out. This book is going to get harder and harder to turn the pages now. <laughs> it's we're in the like second half of the book, and it's like, oh, it does not want to open. That is really cool. The lighting on the face right there is really subtle, but it's so it gives it such a nice depth. <laughs> I need to do a Martin Imon uh, storyteller spotlight or, or like artist spotlight too I've got a pretty good chunk of his work I loved his stuff um, he had definitely a Bisley flavor to his work man that is really nice Ace of Spades you know, there are other songs besides Ace of Spades that Motorhead has done that are quite good. Road Crew. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Speaking of Motorhead, I, I like, never, ever uh, really followed, like, some of the older, like, metal bands. And one of them that I started to check out, and I was surprised how good it was, was Alice Cooper. And then you always hear about him, and uh, he seems like a cool guy and everything, but I had never really gotten into his music. But I started listening to like, some of his early albums, and I was like, damn, this guy's actually it's pretty good music. I was surprised. So that was kind of cool. Motorhead's the same way. I mean, if you really go through and like, actually start listening to like, full albums, they have a lot of pretty cool songs. Oh, man, it's nice. Bam! Man, that's so cool. It's crazy he paints these pages. It's hard enough to do pencils. And then pencils and inks. Pencils and painted. It's like, dude... Crazy. It's hard doing the videos this early in the morning. I'm not as spunky. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, <laughs> like the eyes. Rim job? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because seeing this, it's like I immediately think of like Stephen Platt and Jay Lee. Like they both were like, yes. <laughs> so funny the guy like sitting down with his head off. Alright, 
bear with me as I switch pages again. This is why sometimes I prefer to do the digital books because it's like I don't like the single mounted camera thing for books. I think it gets kind of boring. And also, you can't zoom in like we do here. Ozzy Osbourne, Bad Boys. What? Oh man, that's really, really cool. It's funny because he did a great, like, Santa story. Man, this is nice. That was really cool. Okay, here we go. Come on, Simon. Take us away. It's funny, he loves that blue background. It's definitely his thing. And it's interesting, too, is Phil Hale uses that almost that same shade of blue in some of his paintings. And Phil did some covers. There's another guy. Oh, what's his name? Ooh. Oh, man. I wonder if I can remember it. It's been a million years since I heard of him. He was a really good cover painter for 2000 AD or Fleetway. And he kind of painted like Phil Hale. Oh, what was his name? Oh, man. That's going to be hard to remember. He's way off of the radar of, I think, American fans. Shit, what is his name? I'll have to ask Lee Bermejo if I can't think of it. He might be able to like remember what I'm talking about. As we got more into Phil Hale, there was this other guy. It's not Rick Barry, but it's it's um that's funny. <laughs> this is nice though. It's actually really well done. Yeah, he did covers for those books, and it was kind of Bisley esque, it was kind of Phil Hale esque. Dude was really good, pretty influential, but I don't think he did a ton of comics. Throw out your guesses. If uh, if someone guesses it, I'll definitely remember the name the second I see it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's good. And here comes the drum solo next door. I mentioned that the, the guy next door to me plays drums in another video. I don't know if it went up. It might have been for Patreon. Buy him. That's a cool gun. Blam, blam. Oh my god. Killed them all. I'm going to pause for one sec. Alright. Yeah, these pages are super duper hard to turn. Well, it's kind of Jeff Darrow ish. It's funny. Man, he could draw good. The thing on Judge Dredd's shoulder is such a pain in the ass to draw. It's like an eagle that's laying in a weird perspective that you have to deal with what every time they turn the shoulder pads are actually kind of tricky too it can be <laughs> oh man Oh, dog fight. Dogs and drums. Drums and dogs. And I just need a helicopter. <laughs> this is early to be playing drums. It's like freaking 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't even know if you can hear it. I, you probably could hear it a tiny bit. He used to be really into corn when he was like younger. It was pretty funny. His band was totally like a new metal. All right, let's do Slain. He's like yelling into that guy's butt. <laughs> um, 
looking at the name, see if I see that dude's name. No, this is all like more known artists. It's nice. That's really cool. Okay, let me pause this and we're gonna hit Slain. All right, we're gonna do Slain issue number two. Figure most people probably have seen issue one. And if they haven't, then you should definitely get them all. <clears throat> For me, there's like three or four that are, I think are really, really incredible. And then there's two that are really good, but um, he maybe had to finish them quickly or something like that. It just looks like a little different style, but man, these early ones are just ridiculous. They're so nice. This would be really time consuming too. Again, I mean, I give mad props to him for actually painting these pages because that's just crazy. It would take a long time. And if they started hustling you to get stuff done faster, um, you know, it's create shortcuts for painted work. Look at this, like how good this is. I mean, that's just so badass. Such a killer, killer page. I'm telling you, man, comics. When artists are left to really explore and not just be like another sort of copycat of whatever is hot. Some cool shit. As fans, it's so important to support that individuality, honestly. I think most people that follow my channel get that, though. It's like... This is what makes them fun, is like having an artist that's so unique. How good that is. Jumps, jumps, jump, 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 jumps. I'm actually going to pause it and shut the door because this is annoying. <laughs> okay, I'll be able to hear it, but I think you won't as much. <laughs> this is such a trippy page with this, like, fancy skull guy. He eats it. He's, like, playing the magic bone flute. Or something. It's cool because it's just a series of like really badass little pen and ink sketches. And then he went in with airbrush and kind of blasted it and put a little bit of like flesh color on his skin and, and uh, on the horns. And it's like he's done. But man, it looks cool. It's like, here, drink some blood. You'll be okay. It's like, ah, blood, that's good. <laughs> Oh, Bisley. This is actually a lot trippier than the first. The first issue is a little more straightforward kind of fantasy. I mean, it's got some dark stuff in it. This one's definitely more weird and twisted. Just cool. Really nice hands. Man, the hands and wrists on these are just great. Look at that. So I was saying, he, he really draws pretty good anatomy. Really good. Oh, busy. So, again, hopefully everyone's hanging in there and doing well been super busy so it's like on top of all the craziness going on i've been like just like i have a lot to do so it's it's been interesting because it's like today i had to i had to go to the bank i had to get um gas there was no gas at my gas station it's kind of weird <laughs> it's like nope we don't have gas we're all sold out you're like what 
grocery store is packed at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And if you get inside, it's all picked over. It's pretty depressing. Gulp. Look at that. It's actually pretty cool what he did on his shadow piece. And then you can kind of see his techniques. It's interesting. His, his different pages, you'll be able to sort of peek into his process a little bit more. But again, this is one of those ones where it's basically like a pen, a pen sketch. You know, there, he may have penciled it, but it's really just a scribbly pen sketch. And he's just hit it with a little bit of watercolor and then splattered with a little bit of airbrush or, or whatever, watered down acrylic ink, whatever it is. But um, you know what I mean? There's not there's not a lot of color on this. There's not really a lot of detail, but the the drawings are cool. And he just kind of goes in and hits it with just enough color. And sometimes he'll go back over it with, I don't know, even, it could be more paint or like a little bit of charcoal, but like a, a heavier application of the paint. But generally speaking, you, you when you see that, it'll be real flat. Like, like you can almost see, like, it would be just one big stroke of, like, yellow that he threw on there. But the rest of it is very, very translucent, like the application of color. And this actually still has a lot of pencil down, you know, which creates, keeps the value in. Do you see that? In fact, this could all be pencil. I don't know if that's actually even inked. It's a little difficult to tell. I'm trying to look at the page and not through the camera. Uh, it could be ink. Yeah, I think it is. It is ink because these little scribbly lines look like ink pen. It's very like, it's very fine pen, like almost like a very thin, um, Copic multi liner. But I know he didn't have those back then. But something the cool that could have even been like a ballpoint pen. And then this is all painted. Look at this. You can see, but this is what I was saying is how the style will drift and, and some of the issues to me weren't as strong because of that. Cause it's like, you could just tell that there was like, you know, he was drawing it and then finishing it pretty much right away, which is very, very difficult to do. You kind of hit like a terminal gloss. This stuff gets really, really detailed. Look at this. This is a way tighter. This is awesome panel. Look at this. You can really see the texture of the paper on it, or unless it's just a really odd print. No, the whole page has got that. He did this on canvas, it looks like. It's so weird. It's got like a thing over the whole thing. I'm trying to see. It's the only page like that. I wonder if that's a printing flaw. That's very weird, because this page is smooth. This is really nice, man. I mean, this is like a, a literal work of art. It's so beautifully painted. Oh, my God. The whole page is so nice. Look at this panel. Yeah, I'm hoping the, the printer is open today so I can actually print out my blue line because I don't print them at home. I actually go to a shop, but I don't know if they'll be open or not. If not, I'll just ink it digitally, which will be kind of weird. I don't. I, I may just set the page up digitally and work on some of it and then finish it traditionally. I don't know what I'll do. So I have a feeling it's going to be tricky to print this week. And then, honestly, it's gonna it'll be worse in like two weeks because more people will be getting sick. <laughs> it's like... I'm going to be working through the apocalypse, apparently. <laughs> I'm working for Iron Maiden right now. So that's what I'm, what's like my day work is uh, I'm doing a new series for Iron Maiden, Legacy of the Beast 3. It's fun. It's really, really cool. It's a cool story so far. Very, very like heavy metal. <laughs> Yeah, you can see these are, it's very much less finished. It still looks cool though. And honestly, I mean, it's a great insight into the different techniques that he used because each one of these pages, he tends to approach it in a different way. So you get to see bits and pieces of his process dissected. Like, you know, sometimes he didn't use the airbrush. Sometimes he did. Sometimes he didn't ink it. Sometimes he did. So you really get to see the, the work almost like pulled apart. Um, and in a way, it is almost like looking at a sketchbook of panels. 
because the technique really, really very widely. It's just, it's actually really, really cool. It's funny seeing it right now. I'm like, oh, it's actually cool. I've always liked that though. There's a, oh, sorry, let me pause it here. Sorry, these square binded books are really, really difficult to flip through because it's tight binding. It wants to just keep the book always like shut. But, um, yeah, in the first issue, there's this great sequence where the color fades out and it's this girl making like faces and each panel has less and less of the painted stuff. And it, the final couple are just pencil drawings and they're so badass. The whole, the whole page is great. All right, I'm going to have to pause that again. There. Okay. We're getting them. A pretty nice figure. Slain! Or Blood Wolf, right? Isn't that Liefeld kind of did the face paint a little like that? Or a lot like that. <laughs> Can I get the last page? No, it's not going to turn. Let me pause it. Okay, and this is the end. Again, you can see how the style really kind of shifted. It's cool. All right, have a great day. Uh, next video, I'm going to try to do Mark Texaria if possible. So that'll be fun. It'll be very, very cool to check out his work. I haven't really ever done a deep dive on his stuff. I've always liked it, but uh, yeah, that'll be pretty wild. He did Union too, right? Huh. I don't know if I could find my Union issues, but uh, I definitely could find, um, at the very least, the black and white Wolverine Essential. I'm nearly sure I have that. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>